all three fantastic children, Sophia, Hayden, and, and Quinn, uh, got along really well. They were a joy to be around. Two Lake Oswego families are mourning this week after a float plane crash in Idaho. Three of four victims were just teenagers. We've told you about the crash of two planes over Lake Coeur d'Alene. A local golf pro, his son, and two stepchildren were among the eight people killed. Tim Gordon spoke with the father of those stepkids today. Oswego Lake golf pro Sean Fredrickson, his son Hayden, and stepkids Sophie and Quinn, all gone in an instant. Authorities say the float plane they were on collided with another one on Sunday. Both planes crashed into the lake with a total of eight people. There were no survivors. These difficult times, it's hard each moment, but I know what I'm grateful for, and that is having them in my life. That remarkably thoughtful sentiment comes from Brian Olson. He is the father of 15-year-old Sophie and 11-year-old Quinn. 16-year-old Hayden was also in his life as part of two blended families from Lake Oswego. They just all got along really well, and Hayden was an inspiration for my children. So it was, it was a blessing to have him as part of their life. Right now, Olson is grieving, along with his wife, Courtney Cooper, and her three kids. So is Olson's ex-wife, April, who lost her husband, Sean, along with the kids. She wrote, many of you know that I lost my husband and beautiful children in a plane wreck over Lake Coeur d'Alene. I am reeling from the loss, but take solace in the fact that they were on an adventure and so excited for their first seaplane ride. This is that seaplane ride taking off from Lake Coeur d'Alene on Sunday. It shows a beautiful day for an adventure with white clouds dotting a blue sky. Quinn texted the video to his dad in flight shortly before the crash father and son were close. Uh, best buddy, going to Portland Trailblazer games together, him uh, being 11, going into sixth grade, uh, he was learning a lot of things about me and we were able to share. And firstborn Sophie, her dad described her as a golden spirit, full of energy and a zest for life. She's uh, going well, to be 16 next month. How do you put your head around that as a dad? Uh, just, there were a lot of things I wanted to, to share with her. Yeah. Such a sudden loss reverberating from close family into the community. Tim Gordon, KGW News. It's just unbelievably heartbreaking. Hayden Fredrickson's biological mother, Alex, is grieving too. She raised Hayden in Newburgh, where he was a soccer star and straight A student at Newburgh High School. Our hearts go out to all of the family. As we navigate our way through this pandemic, it's important to remember COVID-19 is a novel coronavirus. It's still new, which means our understanding of it is changing every day. And that includes the range of symptoms. We now know it's no longer just a fever, cough, or trouble breathing. Symptoms can include fatigue, muscle or body aches, headache, a new loss of taste or smell, congestion or runny nose, nausea or vomiting, and diarrhea. We're also seeing the virus spread clearly among younger people, and the impacts on people under the age of 50 vary. Multnomah County Health Officer Jennifer Vine says locally, we're seeing the median age of COVID cases coming down. It was around 50 years old in March. Now it's around 30. It's hard to predict who among uh, um, healthy younger people uh, might end up with severe disease or serious complications from this infection. So we worry when we think that the overall burden of virus in our community is going up because that, that puts all of us at risk, but especially um, our elderly and uh, those with chronic conditions. Vine says now is the time to stay vigilant in slowing the spread. Keep up that hand washing. Wear your masks, especially indoors and when you can't stay six feet away from others. You'll find more from our conversation with Dr. Vines on KGW.com. I want to reopen our economy. I want to reopen our businesses. I want people to be able to, be able to go back to work. The way to do that, says Washington Governor Jay Inslee, is to wear a mask. His order requiring businesses to turn away customers who refuse to wear a mask went into effect today. Morning, businesses guys. in Washington must refuse service to those not wearing a mask or they could face a fine. Outside Park Rose Hardware in Hazeldell, a manager stood outside to remind customers about the new mandate. 
If a customer doesn't have a mask, businesses are encouraged to supply one. Businesses say the first day went well. Uh, it's actually been pretty good. Uh, a lot of customers have been really res res respective of uh, Inslee's wishes. Um, we've had a little bit of pushback so far, but it's all been with uh, positive feedback so far. A business could be fined $10,000 for being in violation of the order. An individual could be charged with a misdemeanor for not following the order. In Oregon, state officials visited 800 bars and restaurants over the holiday weekend to make sure they followed the mask and social distancing requirements. They found most followed the rules, but there were some areas that didn't. Inspectors said they found widespread non-compliance on the central Oregon coast, especially Newport. There were also some violations in Ben's downtown district, along with parts of Josephine County. The OLCC is now looking into those businesses and some may face charges. When it comes to face masks, it's important to know which ones will keep you and others safe. An expert on indoor air quality at PSU says some cloth masks just aren't that effective. Keely Chalmers breaks down which face masks work and which ones don't. In my opinion, we should have gone into you know, world war mode and we should have basically been producing N95 masks as if they were ammunition for war. Since the pandemic began, Portland State University professor Dr. Richard Corsi has been stressing the importance of wearing face coverings. The international expert on indoor air quality was shocked when health authorities did not advise people to wear the masks initially. Now that they are, he wants to make sure people are wearing them correctly. But it really depends upon the material that's used for the mask and how well the mask fits you. That's because even the act of simply talking emits droplets, some large, some tiny. Just by wearing a mask, you minimize the amount of droplets emitted, even those tiny ones. Depending upon the material and how, how well the mask fits, it may be anywhere from 10 to 50 percent. Which could be enough to keep you from getting sick. But the amount of protection you get also depends on what kind of mask you're wearing. If it's woven cloth, it's generally not going to be very good. So it should be a non-woven non -woven material. Which means some of those homemade masks might not be as protective as you had hoped. Things like bandanas and scarves are not very effective at all um, at removing um, tiny particles that go through them. They'll, they'll still absorb and remove big droplets that came out of somebody's mouth. And so they protect you from that, but not from the tiny particles. Dr. Corsi says there are exceptions to the non-woven rule, and you might even be sleeping on one. Cases. It turns out that certain kinds of pillowcases, especially more expensive pillowcases, the pillowcases that are characterized as 600 count pillowcases, have been proven to be pretty effective at removing tiny particles. Also effective, masks like this with a sleeve for a filter. It's a, called a PM 2.5 filter. Just make sure the filter fits it correctly. But if woven unfiltered is all you've got, Corsi says the more layers, the better. Five layers of that material is certainly better than one or two layers. And just as important, make sure it fits tightly to your face. Here's a test. Put on a pair of glasses and breathe heavy. If your glasses fog up like mine did. <sighs> yeah. <sighs> They're totally fogging up. Your mask is not fitting correctly. There was a definite difference when I put on an N95 mask. I think it's doing better. Good. It and had a tighter fit that, uh, and did not fog up my glasses. Still, Corsi says any mask is better than no mask. That's because if no one wears a mask, the risk of spreading the virus is high. If only half the people wear masks, there's still a decent risk. Only if everyone wears a mask does that risk drop significantly. The studies that have been done so far have shown that if everybody wears a mask in an environment, then everybody's protect, protected to levels of 50 to 75 percent reduction in contamination. And that is enough to save lives. So wear a mask to protect yourself, yes, but wear your mask to protect other people around you. In Portland, Keely Chalmers, KGW News.